In the last video, we talked about the Urartian kings and summarized their legacies. In this video, we'll go over some details about the kingdom of Urardu, the tribes of Nairi that preceded it, and their connection to modern-day Armenians. Some tribes of Nairi had possibly Armenian names. There was a Nairi tribe called Uiram, which could be a version of the Armenian name Aram rendered in the cuneiform writing system, where vowels as we know them are interchangeable. For that same reason, this tribe could be connected to the Urumu people, who the Assyrians placed near modern Mush in Turkey and in the mountains of Sasun. Another Nairi tribe was called Duisuni. Historians believe this to mean the tribe of Duis, which in Armenian would mean born of gods or born of daylight. Incidentally, day and deity come from the same root, and light was seen as holy. Continuity between the tribes of Nairi and the kingdom of Urardu. Much like the tribes of Nairi, Urardu wasn't exactly a kingdom, but a confederacy of numerous tribes of various ethnic and cultural backgrounds. Unlike Nairi, however, it seems to have been more centralized, mainly because the kings of Urardu held their domain together through force. There were at least two Urardian royal dynasties. The first dynasty, that of the founder Arame, who united the Nairi tribes, was based out of the city of Arzashkun. This initial dynasty wrote in Akkadian and not Urargian, and they did not call their kingdom Bianili, but rather Nairi, which is evidence of a continuity between the Nairi confederacy and Urardu. The god most associated with Urardu, the chief god Khaldi, had not yet been introduced. It seems possible that Arame was an ethnic Armenian. The name Arame was possibly pronounced as Arama, which is Indo-European, a family of languages that contains Armenian, but not Urardian. Also, the name of his capital, Ardeshkun, is likely of Armenian etymology. Ardesh comes from an Indo-European root meaning bright or white. The language connection. The Armenian language is an Indo-European language that is the only known language in its branch. The Urardian language's only known relative is the Hurrian language, which was spoken in northern Mesopotamia and died out some centuries before the rise of Urardu. Strangely, Urardian is more closely related to the earliest dialects of Hurrian, spoken more than a millennium before the first signs of the Urardian language. Hurrian and Urardian are categorized within the huro urargian linguistic family. One other language, Kassite, may belong to the huro urargian family as well, but this connection is uncertain. A widely discussed and often misunderstood theory connects speakers of proto huro urargian to Caucasian languages. This theory does not speculate that the language families are directly related, but rather that proto huro urargian speaking peoples were in contact with speakers of Caucasian languages such as proto northeastern Caucasian. Some researchers believe that proto huro urargian was spoken by the Kura Araxis culture, a Bronze Age civilization that expanded outwards from the Armenian highlands and South Caucasus to cover much of the Near East. This could explain some of the apparent linguistic ties between huro urargian and Kartvelian, Northeast Caucasian and Indo-European languages. Distinguishing the Kingdom of Urardu from the ethnic Urardian people Urardologist Paul Zemansky speculated that the Urardian people, as in the people who introduced the Urardian language to the Armenian highlands, had been a relatively small tribe from northern Iraq. This is likely where Ardini, the holy city of their chief god Khaldi, had been located. It's unclear when they entered the Armenian highlands, but presumably it was well before the 860s BC when Urardu was first established. The introduction of Khaldi. Urardians were known to worship the warrior god Khaldi. However, the first references to Khaldi were actually within Akkadian names. Khaldi probably wasn't introduced to Urardu until the third or fourth king of Urardu, Ishpwini, who was the first king to write in Urardian and not Akkadian. 
There have been numerous theories regarding the meaning of Khaldi. The name could be a version of Ardi, which is Armenian for sun god, or it could derive from Hal, a version of Helios with the addition of the Armenian D, or it could be from Heldi, which is Hurian for high. More Armenian names in Urardu. Linguists Igor Diakonov and John Grepen suggested that the Urardians may have called themselves Shuri or Suri. This may be related to the Armenian word for sword, Sur, or perhaps some other weapon, or it could be a reference to Shupriya, which was a region west of Lake Van, or it could be something else entirely. According to the Assyrians, there was a Nairi tribe called Shururia and it's possible this was an Akkadian rendering of Shuri. Historian Moses Khorenazi wrote that the founder of the Armenian nation, Haig, settled in a region called Hark. Hark would literally translate to Land of the Ar people in Old Armenian. Many historians have connected Hark to the Urardian Arhi, which means Land of the Ar people in Urardian. To summarize, the people that introduced the Urardian language to the Lake Van region were not initially Armenians, but they probably came into contact with Armenians early on, were influenced by Armenians, ruled over Armenians for a couple of centuries before the Armenians regained control. The first king of Urardu, Arame, may have been Armenian, and some of the later kings such as Argishti may have been Armenian at least partially. In other words, it seems very likely that that Armenian speakers were present in the greater Armenian region prior to Urartu, during the Nairi era at least, if not before. 